గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఫ్రెండ్స్ వెల్కమ్ టు శరత్ చంద్ర ఐఏఎస్ అకాడమీ డైలీ కరెంట్ అఫేర్స్ అనాలిసిస్ ఫర్ ద డేట్ ఆఫ్ ట్వంటీ సెవెంత్ ఏప్రిల్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీ టూ సో టుడే వీఆర్ గోయింగ్ టు డిస్కస్ సెవెన్ మెయిన్ టాపిక్స్ ది ఫస్ట్ టాపిక్ ఈజ్ అబౌట్ ద ఫాక్లాండ్ డిస్ప్యూట్ బిట్వీన్ అర్జెంటీనా అండ్ యూకే సెకండ్ ఈజ్ ద డీటెయిల్స్ ఆఫ్ యాంటీ డిఫెక్షన్ లా అండ్ థర్డ్ ఈజ్ ద బార్డర్ డిస్ప్యూట్ బిట్వీన్ అరుణాచల్ ప్రదేశ్ and assam fourth is some invasive species in western ghats fifth is the household consumer spending survey conducted by nso sixth is the national panchayat raj day and seventh is about urja pravaha so if you see the first uh, topic of the day that is about the falkland dispute this falkland island uh, is uh, yeah so this is island is located near the argentina but this was earlier the colony of britishers uk so that's the reason why uk did uh, both argentina as it is nearer and it is claiming the sovereignty on this island and as it is being the colony of the britishers and did not give independent britishers officially did not uh, uh, leave their uh, sovereignty over this so that's the reason why the dispute arose between these two so even it led to the the dispute uh, led to the war as well so in 19 in the 80s so if you see the present context india and argentina india is also you know that india the why india is involved here between the uh, a conflict between argentina and uk but why india is involved because india is a country which supports the decolonization india is a country which supports the decolonization and uh, peace as well as the settlement of any conflicts through the negotiations so india is such a country which supports the decolonization which supports the peace which support the negotiation process in order to settle the border conflicts or whatever the conflict so here the conflict between argentina and uk india wanted to uh, want the conflict to be settled in a peaceful manner so that is the reason why india and Encar- uh, argentina so with the encouragement of india with the encouragement of uh, argentina so they both established the commission for dialogue okay so this commission for dialogue consisting of many uh, experts from indian territory like suresh prabhu shashi tharoor uh, former ambassador rangarajan vishwanathan so sonia gupta so those uh, several members are there uh, like around 7 8 members are there in this commission so this commission of the dialogue so the they will work uh, uh, for the to reduce to reduce the conflicts as well as to bring them on to the table and also telling them about the importance of following the international laws for example uh, this falkland islands were also called as the malvinas islands okay this these islands are also called as malvinas islands so <coughs> so both uk as well as argentina wanted the sovereignty over the falkland islands so but uh, so the dispute has to be resolved now so this commission of the dialogue is will will try to get them on to the table and try to resolve the issue if you see the background if you see the historical background of the conflict in 1765 british were the first to settle in the west falkland islands but they left okay they left because of the spanish the spanish drove them out for the first time and even after okay even after the this incident a british garrison was there in the west falkland it was rebuilt in 1770 so after overthrown by the spanish britishers came back in 1771 okay but they were again they withdrew from the island because of some economic reasons as because of economic reasons they withdrew in 1774 but during this time while they withdrew they never renounced the claim on falkland islands and then as we all know that the spain uh, portuguese spain were having great foothold in uh, south american continent you know that the portuguese and spain so similarly spain had the uh, argentina colony argentina was a colony of spain so spain had strong foothold on the falklands until the 1811 but argentina government when it declared sovereignty because after it gaining independence spain so see as i already said you argentina was a colony of spain 
so argentina got independence in 1816 okay 1816 so during the when argentina was part of uh, spain means colony of spain falkland islands were also under the foothold of spain when spain left argentina in 1816 okay so when spain gave independence to argentina in 1816 immediately within the four years argentina wanted the falkland islands means argentina declared that falkland islands belong to argentina and uh, the sovereignty of the Argent, uh, argentina extends over the over to the falkland islands but however in 1841 britishers assigned a governor to the falkland islands and this led to a war this led to a war in 1982 between argentina and uk argentina's military government launched an attack on the falkland islands as a result falkland island war began in 1982 okay so this uh, falkland island war uh, obviously the argentina forces were surrendered were defeated so british won the war and hence it the Argen, the falkland islands or we can we can call it as uh, malvinas malvinas were under the british control now till then means uh, so from 1982 so till today it was under the british control in march 2013 in march 2013 a referendum was conducted a referendum or we can also say it as plebiscite so such referendums are called as plebiscites so if we call it as plebiscite so we call it as plebiscite so this uh, referendum which decides the territory which decides the fate of the territory to remain in any country or to uh, come out of that country is known as plebiscite so plebiscite uh, was conduct conducted in 2013 but the island as the citizens of that particular malvinas island overwhelmingly choose to remain as a british overseas territory so however this particular so this is uh, surprising so they did not choose to be a part of argentina which is very close or they did not choose to be uh, independent but they chose to be a british overseas territory so that's why despite wars or un deliberation so many times us deliberated uh, under the request of uh, argentina but the issue of sovereignty remains the uh, point of the conflict now if you see the location yeah falkland islands as i already shown you the map falkland islands are located near the argentina in south atlantic ocean south american continent it belongs to the south american continent malvinas is the other name so malvinas is the other name of that particular continent the uh, sorry islands so so as a part of upsc you must uh, know the location of malvinas island or falkland islands and as it belongs to south atlantic ocean and also you must know that, uh, that these two countries that argentina as well as uh, uk are claiming the sovereignty okay and they have the historical reasons as well okay right so india the the context for which for which we discuss this particular news is india has established a commission for the dialogue right so this point is important for you and coming to the next news that is details of anti defection law right so it is uh, during the time of 1980s uh, it was very popular that i mean it, it became so common to change the party to switch the party to jump from one party to other party in order to destabilize the governments okay so this became the part of part and parcel of the daily politics okay switching the parties moving from one party to other party became the part and parcel of the daily politics so that's the reason why government passed the anti defection law in order to avoid frequent switching of parties in order to stop the jumping of pa parties by the mps so this uh, so today today we are going to discuss the anti defection law because our vice president venkaiah naidu said that there ma there are many loopholes in the law that is anti defection law adl has many loopholes in it so we have to revise the law and we have to close the loopholes in order to implement it in order to implement it properly in order to make the law efficient so the loopholes has to be closed so what are the challenges 
so if you see even though the pa- this particular law was passed in 1980s 1985 part in particular politicians are continue politicians continue to switch the parties why because so many loopholes as i said so because uh, one reason is speaker in lok sabha or the legislative assemblies chairpersons in rajya sabha or the legislative councils as well as courts or dragging these anti defection cases for many years so like of if suppose a mls which is a party from uh, party then his period is only for 5 years or 3 or 4 years but the cases will run up to 10 years 11 years so by the time the case is decided is no more a mla so such cases are also there so that the reason why there is delay okay a lot of delay in deciding the anti defection cases this is one reason why this particular law became inefficient that the reason why uh, and at the same time the law is completely unclear com- we can say that completely mute about the deadline that means about the whether speaker if suppose a law came before the speaker speaker can there is no time limit for the speaker there is no time limit for chair person there is no time limit on the courts to decide the case so that is the reason why there is a lot of delay that is so fun one particular concept is delay so second point is uh, uh and the other t- topic is like what is anti defection law what are the conditions so it gives the conditions in which legislators uh, change the political party so if so and in so and so then some legal action will be taken or they may lose their position they may lose their settlement so it was introduced to the 52nd constitution amendment act so all these facts are important for the prelims okay not directly for the mains and uh, it applies even in the case of independent mls always if uh, as well if they join any political party okay if you see these are the four options how they lose the a uh, case so when a member elected on the ticket of one political party if he gives up the uh, party ticket and if he switches to the another political party then he will lose the seat right so a, a person who has been a person who has been elected from say xyz party ticket if suppose a person is elected from xyz party and if he switches to abc party then he will loses his uh, seat okay and if an independent candidate who win the election without any party ticket okay independent candidate who wins the election without any party ticket after winning the election if he joins any party then also he will lose his seat he will lose his position if suppose and then if lawmakers uh, place in legislature is forfeited then okay so in these two cases in these two cases then his seat will be forfeited even if he switches another party and second nominated then what about the nominated mps you know that in lok sabha Uh, two mps were nominated from the anglo and uh, in rajya sabha 12 mps were nominated but however with the recent constitutional amendment this has been removed so there is no more um, uh, nomination in lok sabha whereas in rajya sabha 12 members have, will be will get nominated so what about this then these 12 mps can join any party within 6 months but after the 6 months they cannot change their party okay then there will be lose the risk of losing their seats right coming to the uh, what are the problems in this particular disqualification and all if you see it is giving the presiding officers that is speaker or the chairperson a complete uh, discretion okay discretion in deciding the anti defection case was given to the speaker and at the same time not only giving the discretion but it did not specify okay it does not specify any time limit by which a case can be delayed for 10 years also 20 years also okay so there is as there is no time limit the case can be delayed so indefinite time so the supreme court determined that the and defection action should be yeah so in the very last year that is in 2021 
if you see there was a important statement given by supreme court in 2021 that is all the anti defection cases must be solved must be decided by the speaker within 3 months so this is very important point to be noted if suppose any suggestions so the our asked in the exam regarding anti defection law you must tell that the supreme court judgment telling that the speakers must act within 3 months must be strictly followed so even after the supreme court judgment this particular rule has not been strictly followed by stating some or other reason <coughs> so okay okay it also gave two options it also gave two options when a person can when a legislator when a mp or mla can move from one party to other party or give away or give or give up his party membership okay so those two cases or the first case is about the merger so the first case is about the merger so in case of merger when two third when two third of the members when two 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 third of members at least two third members of that particular particular party agrees for the merger of one party into other party then anti defection law does not apply in that case whereas in the second case if suppose a person of any party becomes the speaker or chairperson then he can he can give he can give up his political party membership okay political party membership can be given only after the election as a presiding officer okay to like it is expected that he as a presiding officer he will be acting as a neutral person irrespective of the party decisions that's the reason why there is chance for him to resign from his party membership right then what are the loopholes generally the oppositions opposition or opponents of this particular law says that okay this particular law says that the voters elect the individuals rather than parties so this particular law is forcing the mps to stay with a party rather than giving freedom to the mps it is forcing the mps to stay with a particular party but some of the political thinkers argue that generally voters vote for the individual rather than party so we have to give the freedom uh, to the individual rather than forcing a particular party on them so this is first thing second the speaker being the member of usually being the member of ruling party uh, has more chances to postpone the disqualification of his party members okay so being the member of any particular party speaker is expected to postpone the issue not to decide the issue Exp- uh, say uh, means uh, in order to save his own party and second and the third is yeah this particular law is talking about the merger but is it is not talking about the split okay so it's talking about the merger but not talking about the split of a party next at the same time courts are also involved in the, so in this concept so in 1992 spe- in 1992 supreme court said that this particular process is nothing but a tribunal process similar to the tribunal process and hence it comes under the judicial review so courts said supreme court said that the decision made by the speaker in case of anti defection law comes under the judicial judicial review so <coughs> next in january 2020 again so in the just two years back supreme court ordered that the parliament has to be amend the it second constitutional amendment act okay with the whatever the amendments made so it has to amend again the constitution so taking away the speaker's discretionary powers taking away the means supreme court is saying that the discretion powers of the speaker in deciding the anti defection cases must be removed and the other loophole is and uh, sorry other involvement of the court is in 2017 so there was a case was pending okay since 2017 now supreme court itself without the involvement of the speaker supreme court itself took a decision and outstood one of the manipur minister mr sham kumar singh okay and also said them uh, he shall not attend the legislative assembly until the further orders that means without the 
means as according to the anti defection law the decision of the speaker is final okay but here court supreme court said supreme court took a decision took a decision irrespective of the speaker's decision irrespective of the speaker's permission so supreme court ordered that so and so minister that is shyam kumar singh shall not attend the legislative assembly and he will be <coughs> this man has been uh, removed from the legislature okay next so what are the changes we can make where the, what are the uh, changes we can do what are the suggestions you do so in circumstances of defection election commission is saying that election commission of india must be given power to decide so election commission of india is saying that okay it will be the deciding authority second some argue that the decision must be made by the president and governors so few so one section election commission itself is asking that the authority is given to election commission few sections say that president and governor will be given the authority supreme court recently suggested to create a independent panel okay in order to decide the whatever the anti defection claims under one of the retired judge so okay finally many say that the law has failed law has failed so it up it, it only applies in case of no conference resolutions to save the governments so this was said by the vice uh, former vice president amir ansari so after listening all these we can say so in case of upsc if you must be ha- you must have complete idea about the anti defection law for 52nd constitutional amendment of 1985 so what are the facts in it so what are the reasons behind uh, means uh, causes which are the grounds which where the uh, mp can be removed or mla can be removed and uh, what are the safeguards provided in this particular law so th- all these are important for prelims well uh, and coming to the mains you must be you must be in a position uh, to criticize or to con- uh, to make a constructive criticism on the act but and at the same time you must also provide you must be in a position to provide the solutions to the problems right so by you can quote the supreme court de- judgments and all right next the third important news was about the border dispute between arunachal pradesh and assam so here so recently both the prior both the chief ministers of arunachal pradesh as well as assam so arunachal pradesh chief minister pema kandu and assam chief minister imanta bishwa sharma have agreed to form the district level committees so generally the disputes are about the villages bordering villages so there are almost like more than 1200 or 1300 800 i don't know exactly more than so i tell you more than 1200 yeah more than 1200 sites are there so it's not so easy for the state to decide so that's the reason why they were saying that let us appoint the district level committees both chief ministers agreed for this so union cabinet has adopted an agreement so here union cabinet has adopted an agreement that substantially addresses the dispute territories of the assam meghalaya border so earlier this border this border dispute has set in assam meghalaya border dispute has been longly settled so through negotiations and all the process now it is now the time come to settle the arunachal and assam border disputes okay so if you see the historical background the it's uh, assam was a bigger state assam was a bigger state out of assam arunachal pradesh was created mizoram was created as union territories in 1972 later upon they were given the uh statehood in 1987 so they became states in 1987 so they became union union territory separated from assam in 1972 later upon they were given statehood now the problem here come the problem comes here none of the new states whether it is arunachal pradesh or mizoram or nagaland they won't recognize the constitutional boundary that is the boundary provided by the central government in of uh, while creating the union territory in 1972 so they are not ready to accept because they say that it is a 
it is done by the partition partition administration okay of the assam not consulting without consulting the tribal stakeholders so these tribes are saying that we were not consulted in 1972 when these union territories were bifurcated oh sorry when union territories were extracted from assam and also they were given statehood in 1980s so sorry 1987 so that's the reason why the disputes arose so from 1957 study so a study was conducted by chief minister gopinath gurdola in 1955 so from that point of time there was uh, conflicts arose between the arunachal pradesh and assam so if you see there are more than 1200 sites across the 804 km border now what is the solution what has to be done supreme court said that it also created a local border commission local border commission in 2006 which was chaired by the retired judges so however the settlement was completely uh, solved so in this case in september 2014 again a report came the committee recommended that arunachal pradesh be handed back some of the land it was given in 1951 as well as pushing both the roads to the middle okay so so oh, however this uh, does not yield any reason so that's the reason why now okay now the both arunachal pradesh as well as assam government are uh, have appointed the local committees at the district level in order to solve the border dispute next coming to the fourth news that is invasive species in western ghats if you see the this uh, plant okay if you see this plant yellow color flowering plant so this is known as the spectabilis so senna spectabilis so this senna spectabilis is is uh, spreading rapidly in the nilgiri biosphere reserve so if you see the nilgiri biosphere reserve so this is the nilgiri biosphere reserve so located in tamil nadu karnataka okay tamil nadu karnataka bordering region so most of the part is located in tamil nadu and karnataka so this nilgiri biosphere is if you see this is a uh, core regions uh, their restoration zones are there so this biosphere reserve which is very very important biosphere reserve for our environmental uh, point of view uh, there were the invasive species invasive species was there i'll tell you what is invasive species what are the disadvantages of this invasive species and all but as of now just remember that the senna spectabilis is the invasive species which attacked the nilgiri biosphere reserve which is spreading so rapidly in nilgiri biosphere reserve and uh, creating the eco- disturbing the ecological balance so it is disturbing the ecological balance so lack of effective ways to stop the spread of these invasive species is also a serious challenge for the habitat okay so there were no effective ways uh, done by the government or done by the forest officials you know no effective steps in order to prevent the spread of these specta bullies okay prevent the spread of senna specta bullies now what are the concerns it is very simple they will displace the native flora okay as these invasive species increases invasive species increases native flora decreases okay so <coughs> if you see this is a very important term to be noted very important term to be noted that is allelopathy allelopathy means because of it is a biological phenomena uh, in which some biochemicals are produced by one organism which will impact the germination growth and survival and reproduction of other organisms okay so the, in the process of allelopathy only one species survives and the other species around that species okay okay only one species will survive other species around that around this particular species will die okay cannot survive because of the allelopathy so where so because of some biochemicals produced by this organism it will affect the germination growth survival and reproduction of other organisms around it so that's the reason why it can easily spread so on the ground this is considerable impact on the primary productivity so the forest floor practically bear under the so when grasses and herbs are entirely destroyed herbivores are left without food okay 
so as i already said you allelopathy cannot I mean allelopathy plant which follows this concept cannot so when allow other plants to grow around it so that the reason why the grass and herbs grasses and herbs will completely destroyed so why we should be worse are be worse or left without food so the carrying capacity of the forest to maintain the wildlife is declining why because of this invasion because of man animal conflict okay is is there any attempt oh yes already attempt has been done to reduce the uh, spread of the senna spectabilis by uprooting by gridling by chopping by slicing the tree limbs and even testing the use of chemicals to destroy the trees so all are tried by the kerala forest department however all these efforts failed instead so by all these efforts they wanted to remove senna spectabilis spread but they could not make it it, it continued it spread okay so the situation is same in case of karnataka and tamil nadu so what is inv- uh, what are the characteristics of the invasive species these characteristics are non native because that does not belong to the particular plant or place next generally invasive alien species are animals okay and also illnesses other criteria like uh, that can endanger like it can endanger their economy environment and human health they have a negative impact on biodiversity yes causing the native species to become extinct but what are the for consequences biodiversity will vanish because only one species spread other species will die natural resources are becoming increasingly limited and of poorer quality if only one species grow in this forest so it cannot produce all the natural resources so by which different plants have to be grown so only one one species of plants cannot have the cannot have like a complete uh, functioning of the forest and it's there is lack of water floods and wildfires also increase pollution will also be increasing because of overuse of insects next are we doing any efforts yes we are doing the efforts first of all convention on biological diversity acknowledges the pressing need to address the effect of invasive species so cbd we have signed the cbd convention of on biological diversity so as far as possible you must address the effects of invasive species ic biodiversity target 9 and one sentence of un uh, development goal of 1915 says that life on land spe- specifically address the issue so i u c n s s e invasive species specialist group is there in case of i u c n in international union for conservation of nature so aims to reduce threats to the ecosystems and native places by increasing the knowledge of techniques to avoid contain and destroy the invasive species next iucn has also created two information platforms they are global invasive species database gist and iis iis global register of iis so here in this context we have learned uh, what are these invasive species how they affect the biodiversity and uh, what are the laws international laws to govern and international decisions international platform what is the status of this uh, invasive species okay so that's why even we have a global registers for introduced and invasive species so that was so you must imagine the threat caused by the invasive species because it is, it, it almost dragged the international attention it almost con- uh, took the international attention so that's why you must be having complete idea on what is this invasive species so senna spectabilis is the invasive species you find in western ghat region okay particularly nilgiri biosphere region then coming to the household consumer spending survey usually the household spending survey uh, used to be done in 5 years earlier 
but uh, because of this covid and because of other reasons this was not uh, being done properly not regularly so that's the reason why after a long time again the household spending survey has been conducted by the nso okay after a long absence now if you see what is this survey and what is the information given by this survey then all india household consumer expenditure so generally what how the households will uh, spend their money and what are the goods they buy what are the services they buy okay so it will study the expenditure of a household every 5 years why okay national statistical survey then what is the reason this is done by nso so then what is the reason why are we collecting all this information because its goal is to collect information so and uh, how these particular uh, people's habits are there in both urban as well as rural life so you will get to know where the people are spending the money if you know the survey on expenditure data gathered in this exercise represents average amount spent on goods and services including food and all so okay. so it is said that average so on and on like they will not spend like it is decided that much of the people will not spend on lower extreme or the upper extreme but they remain as a average father okay so this process started after long absence so it's used to figure out how poor or different poor of the our india and to look at the economic tricks of the gdp india has not in had any official figures of per capita since 2011 to it so if you see what is nso nso is nothing but nsso plus cso gives rise to n n sorry nso nsso plus cso gives rise to n s so this was recommended by so in order what the formation of nso has been recommended by the rangarajan committee okay so this ns ns over runs under the ministry of statistics program and implementation every month it will publish the quick estimates or iip asi and so okay so this is all about this news uh, mostly important for prelims point of view mostly important for prelims point of view right next coming to the national panchayati raj day april 24 is regarded as the national panchayati raj day okay and was held in started to, to be celebrated for 2010 first national panchayati raj was held in 2010 so till now if you see we have already celebrated the 12 national panchayati so we all know that the 73rd constitutional amendment act of 1992 established the uniform panchayat raj system uniform local self government system in india throughout the territory so from 1993 it was it was got into the effect and uh, so Uh, it is expected so during the time when this particular law is being implemented so when these rules and regulations of the constitution are being implemented it is expected to make a decentralized democracy decentralized development decentralized education so everything right so the politics so it is expected but more or less the expectations were real so panchayats were referred in article 40 of the constitution why because it is one of the gandhian principle so it is one of the gandhian principle to establish the local governments panchayat level government so village panchayat level governments which was one of the dream of the mahatma gandhi and again in article 246 of the constitution gave the state legislature the power to legislate on the matter related to the local self government okay so on one side it is giving enough uh, autonomy but on the other side it says that state legislature can also can also pass a law relating to the local self government topic mentioned in 
the particular corner what is that uh, 11th schedule yes sorry 11th schedule so this constitution amendment act added the 11th schedule to the constitution so in this 11th schedule uh, 29 subjects have been mentioned so 29 12th subject 18 subjects have been mentioned regarding municipalities 11th schedule 29 subjects have been mentioned so out of the 29 country sorry, state can give any number of uh, rights or subjects to the panchayat so every year the ministry of panchayat raj recognizes the best performing panchayats best performing panchayats so <coughs> for example if you see these are the if you see these are the gifts or we can say the uh, recognition given by the government to particular institution so shashakti karam panchayat deen dayal upadhyay puraskar nanaji deshmukh received india ggsp okay next gram panchayat award for the child friendly gram panchayat is given to child friendly gram panchayat okay, development plan e panchayat puraskar all these are the awards given to different villages next what about the committee on balwantrai very very important committee legal regarding the local self government so whenever you are writing any solution to the problems in local self government or whenever you are writing any answer regarding the local self government never forget to mention the balwantrai because it was a very important committee appointed on panchayat raj system in india so the panchayat so according to the balwantrai committee next urja pravaha the urja pravaha a new vessel for the indian coast guard has been commissioned it was installed in the city of baruch so this is a indian coast guard vessel so it increased our internal security as well as our coastal security so this topic is about internal security and the coastal security so coast guard was given the urja pravaha a new vessel was given to the coast guard urja pravaha so it started its, uh, it has been commissioned it was given to the army and it is ensured in the city of either Baruch or Gujarat. So, purely factual important for prelims. Okay. Yeah. So, this is all for today. Thank you students.